Thank you very much to this. Usual, we usual um, Saturday conversation. I can call it. And Saturday public lecture, public lecture. Um, at the uh, frontline show, I recognize and salute um, the brother, uh, Prince, Mr. Prince Chroma, and we provide with then and now a wonderful platform that we've been able to use to communicate and get this family conversation every week. And the decision of um, then and now for provide the Africanist press and myself and by extension, other more progressive voices. Um, I, when I talk about this, I talk about um, Mr. Mohamed Warise, former director of um, Democracy Sierra Leone, who is equally running a regular conversation along with um, what we have on the frontline show. Uh, uh, we are all grateful to uh, Mr. Prince Kroma because Prince, Mr. Prince Kroma decided to take this um, bold step bold decision at the displeasure of not just the ruling party the slpp but at the displeasure of a greater sector of the opposition mostly opposition leaders in parliament and their supporters these are leaders of the apc uh with the support um, leader of the apc in parliament Cherry Koko, and supporters them and also increasingly um, um their parliamentary leader and by extension, um, the opposition of um, outside of parliament who are tied to these individuals. I have seen on social media uh, quite often effort for insult uh, Mr. Prince Kroma and then and now um, to the extent that many of these APC, SLPP and uh, NGC, but more especially the opposition supporters of these parties, uh, the APC and the NGC are so offended and, and then vexed against uh, Mr. Kroma and then and now, because I think say then and now don't provide we with the opportunity for me to talk to Sierra Leoneans directly from that. Yeah. I find that amusing. I find that funny. It's a funny uh, development. But most, most, much, but most also, apart from the, the funny nature of that reaction, now what it tells us about the nature of this, this Sierra Leonean, the character of who we are as Sierra Leoneans. Not too long ago, many of these individuals were really vexed and then and now and Mr. Prince Kroma and the other brothers and 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 we get platforms with on future we and, and and also who are being insulted you know by by these uh Sierra Leoneans who really support these sellout politicians, I would call them. If if not if not that would make them vexed, my, my use the adjective these sellout politicians. Now the fact that um many of these people enforce leading up to 20, make I just say, there is hardly any political party, no political party, no day, with the supporters and the leaders there, eh, no don't insult me, no don't cost me. And this, therefore, with SLPP, APC, NGC, at least at the one way, way, way we don't see. All of them, they may not cost me before 2018, or they may not support me, they may not support or, or dance around me, what kind of support, because I don't really care whether somebody is supporting my work, politician supports my work in Sierra Leone or is against it. Because for me, I don't think they support the work that we do. They basically opportunistically uh, grip in the grip we work whenever they think say the work uh, favor them. So before 2018, many of the people who call themselves NGC, them insult me. The same way people who call themselves APC at the time, be insult me. Some and the people who call themselves NGC, they were SLPP also, they were offended before they became NGC. So after 2018, when Mada Bio win the election, some of the people even they cost me for NGC, some of them take appointments in the government and they did. Then in the process, when we begin scrutinize the Mada Bio administration, many of these people are now APC or SLPP, uh, NGC people, they were they begin dance around we walk, you know, propagator. So I got this request from different platforms 
some run by APC people, some NGC, all kinds of platform. They may ask me for um, get interviews for be on the platform for talk about the African newspaper, for talk about the corruption of Madabi, for talk about the publications of who they make. Sometimes I get for squeeze my own time for make I even be on them them platform. But when I started the African Express and we begin the ride, I was not thinking about these platforms whether somebody gets social media gay and uh, you know I just see people who are they do uh, okay. I appreciate the fact that there are multiple voices out there speaking about the things that are happening in Sudan, whether for, for it or against it. I don't care. I just cared about the work that I was doing. I put to my head. So, but when these people reach out to me and things say they want to interview me on their shows, on their platform, I squeeze me time and make up. I make myself available. Not because I need them for make me work go ahead, but I just believe, say, I wanted to make myself available for get a conversation around them, for cater to the new audience. When I published African Express in the African, I was catering to an audience already that was there that has been with us across the years, across more than 10 years of there about some, many of them non-Sierra Leoneans in the first place. So when Sierra Leoneans who have their own platforms on social media or radio decide for interview me, I was basically catering, then they use me for cater to their own platform, their own audience, which I have no problem with. I, I appreciated that, which is why I subtracted from my own time and my schedule for making myself available. Sometimes some of the social media interview them, even if you say that one hour, they end up go four hours. You get tired with it. But you know, we even tell them no. Because if you felt obligated, because you're not Sierra Leonean, you want to participate, or Sierra Leonean ask you for dinner in platform, you, you decide for that. Not that I did not know many of them represent this party, and some of them don't even cost me not that the past. I have APC supporters, SLPP supporters, NGC supporters, who have not cost me before 2018. Some of them called me literally and sent me a message, say, do you forgive we? Some of them, I even had to remove them from my Facebook page. Some of them, by uh, 2021, when we don't expose Fatima Bio and Mada Bio and travel, they, they had to call me for me to add them on my own platform again. I go for look for them because I have thousands of people where they, where they cost. Because where it cost me, I just the block, remove you from the space. Why? Because I get more decent people than on my page. We don't go one, we don't go one, we don't sell it. I don't know why they read cost cost on my page. In the, in the forum. So I remove people who insult from my page, from my platforms. So I do that. Some of them, I call them, they call me now. Say, hey, do you have all, we don't beg now, add win on your page. So I, I get to look for them, stay in the stack of people that are, that are blocked from my page for add them back. By 2021, the leaders then come. 2022, the leaders, that was 2021. 20, we'll go say by 2022, the, the leaders in a parliament don't already form an alliance with them call a coalition of progressive political parties and they don't decide say then they exclude some of the leaders and for APC and decide to exclude the new leaders them they, they don't overthrow them party and tell their supporters and now you know what you want to avoid African Express not a problem for we they decided to do that but we carry on with we work so the few people that will still continue by the way, at the time, if I may not be nah, then and now, you have been passed two, three times. But many of the people that now we decide to stay away from we and decide to sabotage we work. I had been on their on their platform multiple times. So we disengage. We we decide for fan and avenue. Somebody decide for, for provide we an opportunity for say, if we want to talk to the people of Sardin and continue for spread with a message about a publication. Because we said don't realize, say, okay. In as much as we're in the right now, there's need for me. We explain to people what we're right and what they do because we don't find out, say, some of the audience who we get in Australia, they know they read. But then, even if they go to school, they don't get time for it. So we said to talk to them. So a brother built his platform, has been working on it, decides, say, anytime we need, Naya, we'll give you time. Can't talk. That is what they are now provided. So because of that, the other people, the way they support NGC and APC and then party, then they cost. Prince Kuruma, and then and now, and call them bias, this and that, call the names. Or uh, some of them say, me don't join these other people. Then. <laughs> I mean, the time where I'm going to go on a platform, I join, I join, I know, I'm going to make use of my time. But here, now me, they make use of somebody in platform for communicate a message. That's the difference. When I'm going to use me for cater to my own audience, use me, expertise me, me publications, and for make a talk, I don't get a problem with that because. Now help I'm the help una. I'll be the help una for make una cater to our audience. Maybe even generate for una, uh, more members for our audience. 
generate audience for now. In the case of then and now, now me, then they assist for make a spread my own word. So we see the difference between the two. Now be opportunistic people that we've been decided for hang on my message for carry on on your own uh, uh, selfish intentions, whether or not for promoting a political party, for enlarging a young base, or for cater to an audience. And that would have been do. In the case of then and now, then give me a platform for make me talk to my own audience. So basically, they are helping the African Express and myself to reach out to Sierra Leoneans. Whereas on my own part, I've been they try for use with your own presence on a platform for boost to yourself. Now the difference is that. So in actual fact, now we for the insult, we not only for the insult we for, for way people they try for assist to get a message across. But we understand. Is that my work does not serve your interest. And I, and I know I know they pretend for that. I am not a member of any of your parties. I don't wish to be. But at the same time, nobody dictates how I do my work and how I choose to do my work. And, and at the same time, as a Sierra Leonean, I have a right for interact with any other Sierra Leonean, even if we don't share the same views. So if I choose to stay away from you because I don't discover, say, you are an opportunist and that your agenda is just to serve your own political party and not the national interest, don't be angry with that. I ally with people who mean well for Sierra Leone, who I believe mean well for Sierra Leone. And I'm capable enough. As a journalist, I get over 20 years of experience of working in the press in Sierra Leone. There is a few journalists who get that amount of years with me. And the difference is my work goes across governments, from Tijan Kaba to Anes Kuruma to Madabio. Much of when a politician who is in a parliament who are the support, so we've been there before them, and we still get for there after them. So I'm not bothered with your insults. Your, I mean, for me, mami koso, prezo, anything you know, is nothing to be the only thing. One, no say, your anger and your your vexation, no, they stop me for doing my own work. Number one, number two, I no say, no sign on the world where cause cause change society. That one day I know that. I know I'm as an academic and as a historian, okay? I know I'm back as a journalist looking at societies all, all around the world. So I'm experienced enough and get sense enough and old enough for know what is right for me, who I should work with, and who I should associate with. You know, they determine that. So your vexation is meaningless to me. If anything, if you vex it because I decide for kind of then and now, for, for way then and now, give me an opportunity to talk to the Serena people. I will come here 10 times in a day. If, if that, if, from just there, you say, I, not, not because of the anger will stop me for do that. I will do it com completely and do I'm back to your own annoyance. So, anyway, I just wanted to set that premise before we begin the conversation and put people at bay. For example, uh, I don't see, we're going to talk about this. We may want to talk about this information. The last couple of days, me and uh, uh, Brother Prince Kroma, but um, as soon as I know, I already uh, they on the move today. I even broadcast Tona from uh, the city of Louisville um, and Kentucky, basically. In fact, in Arabic, we miss the time zone. I have been here for the last couple of days as a visiting scholar at uh, the University of um, Louisville. And the good thing here is that we also get a good number of staff on the ground, people who have been working with the African Express. So when I expect, say, uh, in the next couple of weeks, you will be very much um, seeing more productive work with a return to the Sunday, Sunday schedule. When I remember, by 2021, every Sunday night, we'll be publish an article on Sierra Leone. And we'll be stopped because we don't know, so we don't, we don't finish with exposing the matter of your government. Now, moving forward, we don't see now the collab the people who have been hide behind the scenes, so even the help matter of you, a lawyer them, a parliamentarian them, and, and other civil society and media groups and business people, who even they hide, we don't see them now. So, moving forward with the return to the actual schedule, our regular Sunday publications will come back as it were. We will need for change that, style, that pattern because we'll be. We'll be push back the narrative, we don't succeed for do that. The effort of the opposition in parliament and their supporters will be the try for uh, silence the African Express and the no work. 
So we, that may require we for change with tactics and we, and we strategy of publication. We have to see these short publications where they come out different kind of snippets uh, daily, daily and regular uh, by the hour publication. Now we we'll come back to weekly schedule with the exclusives that we've been publishing. So I look forward to that. And um, that is part of one of the things I look forward doing from uh, the state of Kentucky in at the University of Louisville, where I am right now and hope for the, for the next couple of weeks and months, um, at least uh, till the winter come. So that na the, that na the, that na the, na the uh, purpose, you know, the preface of today's conversation. So last week, if you remember, we've been getting a very uh, instructive conversation. That instructive conversation we got to do with the um, Anti-Corruption Commission, how the, the ACC has been used in elections, in every presidential election, as a weapon against political opponents. We've been traced the inception of the ACC since 2002 under the uh, Kaba administration. And we mention exemplary people who have led the commission, especially in this case, I will repeat, uh, Valentine Collier. Val Collier was not a lawyer, was a very outstanding uh, public official in Sierra Leone one of the most credible public officials you will come to find, very principled man, uh, impatient with um, some of the Dabaru business where Salon people um, uh, can always exhibit in public offices. And I say that because as a journalist, and by the time helping to edit Concord Times or as editor of Concord Times, I watched Val Collier up to the point where he was forced out of office by the SLPP administration um, uh, with the use of parliament because he was very determined at the time for exposed corruption within the SLPP administration led by Tijan Kaba to the extent that he fell apart with Tijan Kaba. Tijan Kaba, um, I remember an event at the British Council when he was launching the anti-corruption strategy of 2005, complained, say the ACC don't get a bad name. But there was a limit to what the anti-corruption commission or ACC or anti-corruption commission can do at the time because at the time in as much as you had a commission you can get anybody as commission of anti-corruption commission we don't necessarily get to be a lawyer so what we witness on the um uh tijan cabana be a very determined commissioner we've been determined for go at the length at the length and breadth uh, you know very determined for go too far with investigating corruption of government ministers he investigate uh, Okere Adams, Harry Will, all the while. Big stories, big, 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 big cases of ministers being investigated by the ACC, but the ACC being very powerless at the time because it never had uh, prosecution powers, the power for prosecute. In fact, at the time, anybody when a senior person like that can be an ACC commissioner without being a lawyer. So now after um, Valentine Collier, now they turn now the, the call for the need for me, the ACC begin get prosecution powers, the power for investigate and also prosecute on their own independently begin come. And because of how the Tijan Kaba administration handled the anti-corruption uh, problem, the British defeat, them fold up funding. They even decided to held up some of the support to the ACC leading up to the elections of 2007. In fact, at that time, they will begin getting musicians and like Daddy Saj. Uh, produce corruption, corruption, you do so. Now you turn there, you see Emerson step on the stage with the music. We get for deal with um, uh, uh, corruption largely. Bobo Bele, you, you know, Two Foot Arata, all these kind of songs. So the, the emergence of new protest music in the post war era, anti corruption music in itself was symptomatic of the prevalence of corruption in the country under the SLPP of Tijan Kaba. So the Anti-Corruption Commission's frustration in, in this determined effort to go after corrupt people was crippled because the commission, when they don't investigate it, and they send the file and go to the Attorney General's office, the Minister of Justice and Law Officers Department. And there was an unwillingness on the part of the Law Officers Department to prosecute many of the people there at the time. And this was the time when we've been getting uh, 
at some point, um, Eke Halluel as Attorney General and Minister of Justice, at some point will be get better as um, Attorney General and Minister of Justice before he become Vice President and, and leading up to um, the elections of 2007. But at the time, it was already obvious that the government of Tijan Kaba was massively corrupt. You know, and 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 not only the music itself. You know, we need newspaper or anything, or what are they talk about? But just look the music we come out with in it, and then they, from jungle leaders to um, Emerson Bokari to Daddy Sarge, uh, innocent with the um, they were who give a notice. You know, so you see, say by 2007, the length and breadth of Sierra Leone, everybody knew. What in Abuja, Bele, they knew to foot Arata. You know. Anti corruption, the watch, you know, that kind of thing. And so you find out, say, um, the Anti Corruption Commission was really progressive. And, and the effort of the Anti Corruption Commission for Fed Corruption was also replicated in the efforts of these um, cultural producers, musicians producing music that complemented the effort and the message of the, of the ACC. So the removal of Val Collier. And the crippling of the Anti-Corruption Commission played a role. The corruption fight or the idea of corruption played a significant role in the defeat of the SLPP in 2007. There are no questions about that. There are no questions about that. But significant development happened after the election of 2007 as regards corruption. When Anes Kromaka and power, there was need for sure, the international community and development partners, donors, will be not begin fold up the money. Because I remember by 2005, a donor conference that was supposed to be held in Paris was never held for make uh, support was postponed because they were not fed up with the fact that the government, the SLPP government of the Jankaba was massively corrupt. They were not withheld funding. Likewise, like out of uh, British. So even when I school Markham, there was a need for what they call an international public relations effort. That, that made them be appoint uh, Tony Blair for help uh, build what they call investor uh, confidence from England for come and then we get this Australian conference, investment conference in England. And Anes Kuruma was at Chatham House, where if you check the speech and everything, he he was basically assuring Sierra Leone, I mean the international community, say Sierra Leone was supposedly ready for business, ready for investment, and all of that. So subsequent to that, we see. Subsequent to the Chatham House visit after the inauguration of Ernest Kroma, a lot of companies being cancelled, London Mining now, African Minerals, Ardax, you know, and Sokfin, where they in uh, uh, Pujau now, they harass people in a San Malen chiefdom. All the while, you see a lot of a lot of corporations flooded in, mining uh, uh, companies begin to open up. So the British also restore money into the anti-corruption effort, renew them, their, their support. Why? And, but that not only happened so because there was need for also change the legislation, the law we set up the Anti-Corruption Commission, a review of the Anti-Corruption Act that existed before 2007, uh, between 2002 up to 2007 was, was done. In 2008, we get a, a new act, the Anti-Corruption Act of 2008, one major thing we do, apart from the fact that he introduced the, the requirement that anybody where they head the Anti-Corruption Commission would not be a lawyer of at least some kind of a, a 10 years of, uh, with 10 years of experience or 10 years post bar, um, he also had a prosecution power, the power to prosecute, he gave the commission the independent power for investigate and charge people and go to court. Now, more development don't take place since then. The setting up of a special anti-corruption commission court and you know all all the things anti-corruption judges and then but we'll come to that but by what i type of say by 2008 where an escroma come now power by 2008 he strengthened the anti-corruption commission in two ways making sure whoever becomes the anti-corruption commissioner that somebody who is supposedly of uh, 10 years experience as a lawyer by that point, if I don't qualify for be maybe even a judge, so you are familiar with the law. If I don't know the law, you know the, the, you know how for charge, you know how for help, uh, uh, investigate or superintend the investigations and the legal aspects of of 
of the of uh, uh, violations where they take place in such kind of situation. So, which means Ernest Kuma actually took a, a move, the first move for ensure the independence of the ACC. That has to be given to him. The independence of the ACC by making sure that the ACC investigate corruption, not to pass the Senate to the Attorney General when a member of the cabinet, but then can send them directly in a court. So he left to the court now for either judge the case and convict the person or convict the person on a different story. But the commission, for the first time, had an opportunity to have a lawyer as his head, had an opportunity, the legal authority, for investigate and charge on the own going to court. So now would I want for charge or would I know one for charge? But if the basis for charge exists, they're not going to say that the law officers department prevent them for charge as the case was under Val Collier. But in the so learning from that lesson, Anes Kumar decided to lead the process to reform the anti-corruption commission because for make the all them big big companies and Canada the country people and begin put money back, they need for make sure say corruption is reduced or there are ways to punish anybody we go we try for dupe um, the state in in a, in a particular fashion. So and what that means was that the commission had to be made more independent. And one way for make and for Giam a new law we go restore in autonomy. And Anes Kumar led the process or allowed the process for making new members of parliament and in your own government also uh, lead the process for pass a new law. And at that law day, um, now under that law day, now Tijan Cole became anti-corruption commissioner, which means Tijan Cole was the first, supposedly one of the first, or uh, had more authority and more independence than any other commissioner before him. He has a legal authority than any other commissioner before him for pursue and fight corruption more than Val Collier. And if you now listen to me, for the most part, I have singled out uh, Val Collier and Tijan Cole, say, now they will go read safe, uh, if we assess at the corruption commission, now under the way we assess the effectiveness of the commission or not. And this is not to say because I, I, I know Tijan Cole, no. And by the time he was commissioner, I had significantly been disengaged mostly as, as, a, as a journalist at the time, since I don't focus in more in other, in other parts of the, of the world, most especially I was, my work was more focused on East Africa, Kenya, and other places at the time, between 2008 to 2010. So which means by the time he was in office, I not been paid too much attention, but I do know reading from the papers and whatever that he ran into conflict with the state and then uh, escape out of the anti-corruption commission and run away and, and resign unceremoniously and go. So on that basis that he resigned from the commission for trying to do right, whereas Val Collier was forced out just a kind of forced Lara Taylor Pierce. So I had singled these two out. But if, I, if you ask me today who has been the best co anti-corruption commissioner, ACC commissioner ever since the commission was established, I'll, I'll tell you up front that Val Collier is the person to talk about is it the uh, man to talk about. So today I don't decide for continue the conversation I initiate last time, which is the Anti-Corruption Commission and how it has served as a weapon against political opponents since at least 2007 to now. And I've been mentioned in the past um, conversation briefly in passing in 2011, uh, the process, two examples of in the past election. The uh, timber gate uh, leading up to the elections of 2012 and the um, hajj gate leading up to the elections of 2018 as two examples. And now leading up to the election of 2022, 2023, we get what we call the chance rebuilding case. So I want for today spend some time as the second part of this conversation, we'll talk about these two, these incidents in brief. I, will, I, I think we'll have to spend more time in the ACC for the next couple of weeks talking about this. But I want to take a, a break now, yeah? And come, please, um, I see we want to get an appreciable audience. Let us share the um, link to this video while we take this break and we'll come back and now go into the conversation. Today, I no plan for make this long. Um, I just moved into a new city and I'm, I'm trying to settle down and get other things, you know, um, get going. So I will try to make this conversation a little bit shorter than we used to used to have. But I'm hoping that in the process we will talk about 
many things. I will try to mention this whole idea of uh, um, Mamadi Dumbuya from Guinea visiting Sierra Leone and the anxiety it has caused. I will, I will try to spend one, two minutes, in, uh, maybe towards the end, if I not forget. You know, but so we'll take, a, we'll take a break and we'll come back. And thank you very much for being here. Uh, this is the Frontline Show. And again, I salute um, Mr. Prince Kroma and the Then and Now platform for this wonderful opportunity where they, where they provide with every week. I will come back uh, shortly after this break. Once again, I thank you very much for the um, wonderful time and uh, opportunity we uh, then and now give you for get this regular weekly conversation. Today is um, the 29th day of October. It's on a Saturday. And from me on time, um, we have 2.40. And uh, I see already we got an appreciable number of people, people watching from Berlin, from different parts of Europe, the UK in Sierra Leone and um, next week or uh, you know we got to bring up a new program we'll talk about the disinformation campaign and how to counter this information as soon as I know we don't get very uh, dangerous poison that is being spread by the politicians in Sierra Leone and their um, allies both in civil society in media and all of that and, and there's a need for interrogate this information as alone now uh, for especially so from the last year to now, we go for a look at the uh, reported arrest of people, the um, effort for discredit credible institutions like then and now and other people, um, the slanderous campaigns, lies, you know, effort for uh, create distraction, drama, and all that. How for counter them? How for discover? I will give you an example from your own experience. People the way they send we fake information, thinking, use people the way we believe or send uh, fake information to them for many person to we. We look at those things, how we able to identify some of these things and how we identify them, how they vet information. We think say it's high time we educate the Salon and public about this information campaigns, especially as we go into the election. And for point out, not only example, but point out possible areas where these um, these information efforts are coming from that we've identified. And we will name names um, of people we don't try for pass fake information to people that we believe, people that we know, so that they will pass them on to we or some of the way pass them to we directly. So that duty, we owe this, we owe this to the country and we, and we people them. So um, a couple of things has happened since our last conversation, which is the chance we build in case. Because at the, the chance we build in case will be in start where we begin highlight the um, effort of uh, the Anti-Corruption Commission and how it's becoming a tool in every public election. So um, we will we will start off the conversation from that point by way of of an of an update from the um, Anti-Corruption Commission, and not only not only the current chance to build in case, but working backwards for see how similar situations don't happen. And I don't already highlight tone, I say, 
the Anti-Corruption Commission get the, the power to prosecute, the power, the independence, we'll talk about the autonomy of the Anti-Corruption Commission, the autonomy, the independence of the ACC was given to it in absolute terms by um, the Anes Baikuruma government. Because I remember last week when I, when I talk about this situation, the weaponization of the ACC, I see argument on social media, especially coming from APC people then, we tend for uh, uh, misinterpret or misrepresent my words that I don't talk say Anes Kuruma and I weaponize the, the ACC. Uh, that's not their own interpretation, but my words are very clear. The institution is what I'm looking at. So the president appoints an anti-corruption commissioner. In the case of Anes Kuruma, first and foremost, he ensured that a legislation was passed, a law was passed in parliament that made sure whoever is going to be head of the anti-corruption commission will be an individual with at least 10 years of legal practice. If it don't be 10 years of legal practice, that means a, you will call a, a senior lawyer, according to the lawyer then. Anybody don't be 10 years post bar, if you're in Nigeria, you get the right for being excused for practice in a saloon, for representing somebody in a saloon within the Commonwealth countries. So and I know about my attention about this was was this was brought to my attention in 2000 and uh, subsequently after the war when Edo Okania, a Nigerian lawyer, had come to Sierra Leone to represent Fode Sanko, and Berewa uh, uh, Berewa had not been agreed. Solomon Berewa had not been agreed for making represent them, including even um, uh, Eke Halliwell as Attorney General had not been agreed. Part of the argument was that since Edo Kanye, a Nigerian lawyer, would be one for represent uh, Fode Sanko, was nine years and a half, even on the nine years, six months since he began practice law in Nigeria. So, based on that, they think say, he was not qualified to represent anyone in Sierra Leone. So, the man put up an argument say, since he not been careful practice law in a saloon uh, and did it completely, he may they asked for some kind of a waiver that will allow him to just represent his client who was Fode Sanko. They made up an argument back and forth. Now, how are now the special court charge Fode Sanko and take him from the judiciary of Sierra and transfer him to the, to the special court trial. But the idea of 10 years post bar, that you have to have 10 years post bar experience in another Commonwealth country, in say West Africa, you can be allowed to practice. That is when um, my first, in, you know, uh, introduction to that arrangement within the legal system of the of, of British Commonwealth countries in West Africa, um, I, I, I became aware of it through observing and covering. And by that time, most of the articles were right, they were published by the Democrat newspaper. This was, I think, around 2002, 2003, if I remember very well, um, if I don't forget. If, uh, sometimes I therefore look at, at uh, my papers and foresee. What time? But now that ten day, I can't know. So when an escrow madam passed law in 2008 for talk say anybody with the head of the anti corruption commissioner, you know, for be or, or any kind possible, for be a lawyer and only a lawyer, a lawyer with 10 years' experience, they really meant that they forget a senior lawyer will be say Nangu serve as head of the ACC. Then a major change from the 2002 Act we introduced, we established the commission. The number two thing again we then say that the commission for the first time again forget under that law the power for investigate and prosecute and charge guna court. That not been the first time where the anti-corruption commission investigate under the Janka Baden term, then they make the file, then everything the evidence will then get and send them to the attorney general's office, to the AG's office. And the the AG, as we already know, that the Minister of Justice, a part of the cabinet. So you don't go on for charge any government minister. But rather the problem they encounter with, with Valcolia, the, the Parliament for some. They come out. Then basically they chased him out of the ACC. So learning from that experience, and TNS Kumana within a parliament that ended the day, I think he decides say for make them get confidence in the anti-corruption effort, they need for change the law. They not only change the law for make sure that the commission get the power for prosecute, charge on their own. But the commission also get the power for, I mean, the commission should be led by a, by a lawyer, senior lawyer. So Tijan Cole, now under that circumstance, Tijan Cole become um, ACC commissioner. 
which means he was he's a senior lawyer, held the commission, he had more independence by law. The law gave more independence for staff. So when they talk about the independence of the anti-corruption commission, it begin that process, the legal, the legal basis for me, we talk about the, the autonomy of the ACC start under Anes Kuruma, under the 2008. Now, there's a difference. It's a different conversation whether the ACC are not able to operate independently, regardless of the fact that they get, a, they get this law, we allow them. And for many of us, we don't already talk, say the ACC has not been uh, independent of the machination of politicians. We don't know that the politicians within a power or politicians with power has not they've not allowed the anti-corruption commission the acc for operate independently and work fairly in pursuit against graft against corruption in fact now because tijan cole enter into that kind of situation i make it run away left in the case of val collier you know we get the power which Tijan cole get which Tijan cole didn't get the power he get the independence for pursue corruption the politicians they will get power in the country, then chase them out for me run away. So moving forward, the question is: Has the commission been use, useful? Has it been useless? And what has made the commission useless? A useless entity. Okay. In my view, we do not need an anti-corruption commission in Sierra Leone. The reason is because I don't observe the commission from 2002 to 2022, 20 years history. I don't find out say. It has produced what sociologists will call its latent functions instead of its manifest function. The purpose for which the Anti-Corruption Commission was established, it has failed to live up to those expectations and for that purpose. It don't otherwise turn for be the reverse of what it was established for. So in that case, there is no need for an ACC. The reason why we get an Anti-Corruption Commission is because the, 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 the transparency mechanisms in the country we are destroyed. We are destroyed by the politics uh, of corruption, political corruption, and, and, and the lack of institutional independence within the governance arrangement. Okay, checks and balances, not the operate, separation of powers, not the operate in a real sense between the three arms of government. So, with the end of the war, international organizations begin to recommend the setting up of complementary organizations and processes where they open up democratization and accountability and transparency in the management of public resources, especially so when many of the resources go into many of these countries we don't suffer war and crisis and disaster, they are basically the, what do you call donor or, or grants or debts from IMF, World Bank, DFID, and all these international agencies. And some of it are loans, grants, or development assistance. And many of what you call development assistance or grants or loans are also monies from taxpayers in the countries that these monies originate from. Taxpayers in America, taxpayers in Canada, taxpayers in Norway, taxpayers in Sweden, taxpayers in England, taxpayers in Belgium, Germany, and other such countries. Now, they have money, now the government, they take the organizations, organizations, and put them into some of these countries. They have to be held accountable in America, in Canada, in Europe. For these monies they have to have a way to justify and explain why then they continue for give salon money and one way for continuing for say the money is benefiting ordinary people is providing water supply is providing good roads is providing electricity supply but now with 20 years of the setting up of an anti-corruption commission way for prevent the theft of public money by public officials and then provide services, better services, social service delivery, economic and social development for, for Sierra Leoneans, we don't end up in a situation where our conditions have gotten worse than it was before 2002 when the ACC was established. It has gotten worse in 2022 more than in 2002. The question then is the Anti-Corruption Commission has failed in the supposed pronounced effort for MOP and prevent leakages, theft of public funds, we will go into social service delivery. The question is then, how did it fail? Who are responsible for its failure? We'd already established, say, intentionally, a government that came to power in 2000 and following 2007 elections empowered the commission with law and an institutional arrangement that would have allowed it to operate independently. But then it, it has failed to do that because the politicians with power 
located in parliament, in the judiciary, in other sectors of the, of the administration have disabled the commission from functioning. And that is what I want to talk about today. Now, that's what I want to talk about. And using three examples, the current chance rebuilding case, what we get leading up to the elections of 2023, the Hajgate, way, way happened leading up to the elections of 2018, and the Timbergate, way happened leading up to the elections of 2012. These events, these three major things that are not happened coincidentally, not a coincidence, they, they not only happen right at the time when elections then they come, but also they are, uh, they occurred and involved individuals who have a stake in any pending election, any pending presidential election. In the case of 2011, with the Timbergate, it, it, it was zoomed on the vice president who many in the APC at the time wanted the president to remove so that they will take charge and become, and become in his place. They're not being one make Anes Kuruma run with her in the elections of 2012. Now, did they succeed to do that? No. Why did they not succeed to do that? We have to talk about that. We prefer why uh, JFK or Joseph Kamara not be able or not be moved ahead for charge Sam Sumana at the time, even though he had the power to do that. And if he want to do that, he for been do that. Even if he go lost the case, he for been do that. But he not do it. You don't understand. And that there was no basis to remove the vice president this instance and move on with um, um, a candidate in the election. So if Anes Kuruma wanted to run in the pending election uh, with another person, he would have to drop this his ongoing vice president. But regardless, you see, he ended up dropping the vice president leading up to the election of 2018. Not only that, appointed another vice president who was also supposedly implicated in another corruption scandal, the Hardgate scandal, and then automatically uh, the people who were accused also, two of the most senior people in the party at the time, the deputy chairman of the party, Minkailu Mansare and Victor Fo, we are senior people in the APC, very senior people. But they also, because of the Hajgate corruption scandal, they could not have a moral basis or a justification APC wanted to do that. The APC members wanted, wanted them to do that. They will not have they were discounted by that allegation. Now the allegations were dismissed. Um, um, they've been turned down. They've been, you know, they don't, they don't throw there. And the question is, how did Adema Kali, who was the commissioner at the time, also able for charge them and then they all come up with those allegations against them or who was investigating them, which affected and who were the beneficiaries? Is it possible that the APC ticket as it was in 2018 will have become that ticket if the Hajgate scandal not happen. Now, leading up to 2023, we also get the same ACC implicating a leading contender for the election. Somebody, Samura Kamara, is also implicated in this case, simply leading up to the election 2023. And many of the, and this also has to do with the APC internal politics and also the national politics in the elections. So all of these are correlated and connected. They are not separate from each other. They are not coincidental. And they all got to do with the commission. So when I put all of this in the, in the perspective, and then contrast this development, this the way these three cases will then put more seriousness into where they end up to be zero, zero, and zero. Eh? And then look at the evidence of corruption itself as we have it. And really, corrupt people the way we all know, where where they waka waka around, we don't use the, both the media and politicians don't use as examples of corruption. And ACC never touch them, never bother about those things. Then the question is, why do we need an ACC? In my view, if we had an effective audit service, an audit service that checks and inspects, independent audit service where they check and inspect government expenditure and track them and reporter, and, and then there's action from parliament, the parliamentary accountability and finance committees, they will take control the, 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 the oversight responsibility of parliament for safeguard uh, public finances, we're not going to get this kind of um, uh, need for an ACC. So because then the accountant general's department will ensure that they're not going to just write check 
or allow or authorize the opening of an account without um, you know, going through the required procedures. So if this internal control mechanism, internal audit processes, transparency system within the administration were respected, the institutions and the, the Accountant General's Department, the Audit Service, the Parliamentary Oversight Committee on Finance or Accountability Committee, as you have it, and Parliamentary Account, Accounts Committee or Accountability Committee, the PAC of Parliament, the Audit Service, the Accountant General's Department, hmm? the central bank if it's independent the bank an independent bank governance central bank they they are enough more than enough for control wasting public spending for control theft of public funds there when somebody steals public money it becomes a criminal offense the criminal investigations department of the police will be called in to arrest criminals who steal public money and they will be charged to court and where the courts are independent these people will be sentenced there will be no need for a special commission to look at um, the crime of theft, a, a theft of public funds. You know, we need that. You can get anti-corruption laws, laws that are against corruption, but implemented by the transparency mechanisms within the system that exist from the parliamentary level to the executive branches of government and to the judicial uh, branches of government. Because when you talk about central bank, is tied to the Minister of Finance. The General Department is tied to the Minister of Finance. The audit service, likewise. The parliament, you see, these checks and balances and separation of powers would have allowed the proper functioning of government for reduced corruption. Now, because they're not functioning, that makes them add another, another institution, an appendage to the internal transparency system, hoping that will be independent to do. But what we don't can find out, without people and not take notice, the same way we we'll see how they weaponize the central bank and the currency market against opposition, uh, certain opposition politicians there. Now, so also the Anti-Corruption Commission don't function in these 20 years as an aberration to the process of transparency and accountability and don't become a weapon for exclude and target particular politicians. And in the case of um, these three examples who they use, it is not happening by just the, the especially in recent times, you take, you check this, check this, take this uh, chance rebuilding case, it don't happen as an independent operation of the um the ruling party alone it is is a joint effort by um people uh, lawyers politicians and parliamentarians largely in the opposition and across the ruling party now, a joint party effort a coalition that is built in parliament together with the ruling party in their effort to exclude one of their own kind decide for use the commission for stifle or harass and intimidate their own potential contender, both within the, the opposition party, uh, APC, and at the national level. You, 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 you don't see the case. The second, the, the other case in 2018 was a case of where the internal struggles within the APC itself as a ruling party, also the ACC was played in, they played into that fight for disabled key competitors within the party so that other people will rise up. That is how you will have some a junior politician like Cherno Majuba becoming um, a favorite from the shadows. They just emerge as uh, this unknown um, uh, assistant uh, flag bearer or deputy flag bearer to uh, the APC tickets in 2018. Because the question would be, who side the other two senior? If, for example, the ACC not been framed up or go after uh, Minkailu Mansare and of course, Victor Fo, will is it possible that you forget a junior party member floated? The question of a selection or appoint, uh, appointment. And, and don't forget, this is the same individuals who are benefactors of the same undemocratic processes for bring them up the stage of, of the national political stage that they now they organize a coup using the same judiciary and the same anti-corruption process for uh, elevate themselves and hold on to their party. So when you examine this, what you are talking about is junior ranking politicians hiding within political parties and use power, use power and the appendages of power for, for carry out their own operation. You know, in, in, in other countries, it's called the fifth column. So what we've come to identify is the fact that APC opposition members who were mostly, mostly, you might call them in the past, this were the chromaist, the die diehard supporters and die diehard followers 
who um, in 2013 went to U Building and endorsed Ernest Koma as the party's chairman and leader for the third time. And not only that, went as far as going to put Lokoy and endorsed him as chairman for life. And not only that, they begin calling after you, now you even propagated a third term agenda that the very people then uh, mushroom into these institutions, the Anti Corruption Commission, and now don't end up um, uh, elevate themselves to higher levels within the party. Now, in opposition, they are still working and using the same institutions the same way they use them, but now in association with the regime in power. So, the same way. We Use them and they elevate, we elevate them for create this kind of a, a clandestine network within their party for disabled and young people, and so they, are, they will propel themselves ahead of the political stage. It's the same way they are using Mada Biona as a shield for for further deepen um, this process, this coup d'état. You call them a national, a national anti democratic coup, and it has no respect for party. Many of these people are APC, SLPP, joined together. They don't even care about party lines who've come to identify. And the Anti-Corruption Commission is one of their weapons that they've used, especially in 20, leading up to 2012, 2018, and now increasingly to um, uh, going to 2023. So I will take a break here. The work I will begin break these issues one by one. So we will not just be talking like this, but examine the examples. And I will start by also bringing the way of by way of update the uh where the court is where the court matter is because i understand now they're coming to new york i will read the um i'll get the court documents and i outside the judge the uh, illegally appointed adrian fisher has um, ruled that the court case on samura kamara for canada new york now that they've come up from freedom they take we don't taxpayer money pay for themselves in Wakakan and New York, they say they can extend the trial up to New York. You know, one, the, the, the trial is now taking a year. It has not concluded. Number two, the, 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 they are now spending more money per diem and tickets from your money back for saying that they can't look at the building in New York. They, they can't look at the site in New York. The judge, or the lawyer, they're now the accused person, they're now, they don't talk to the freedom for one whole year. They, they transfer now to New York again for can continue the case in New York. Maybe they say one go claim that the building, the card go claim that the building upside at the roof, you know, Fisher and, and all the ones. So I understand all the accused persons, including Samura Kamara, Nalo, and other people, all the camp. But don't forget, before the ACC charged the matter, court, the ACC claimed that it had investigated them. You don't come to New York, they go to China, go other places, they investigate. That's what the ACC been telling me. So the ACC now, after their investigation, they've charged the court, the court, the judge, or the prosecution, or the people the way they're accused now, they're all back, they sit on a plane, then they travel. In fact, from the court document, they say that they come off return, they go to Dakar, Senegal, from Senegal, then go. Then come to uh, uh, America. So they will be in America, I think, from next week. I don't know if it's Monday or so, but they can't read the document them. So when I go, when I go yeah, done a way of update. So when I will not be no say the Samura Kamara case, they can New York, but I know her now from me. I don't see her in the court papers, and so I understand saying they can New York, except they change their mind now. But that is what is on floor. Um, they will be bringing the trial to New York. It very much, uh, you ask yourself whether it's it useful, or what is the essence of that? Whether useful or useless, the, what, what we are saying is that the Anti-Corruption Commission is wasting our money, wasting our public money, as far as the, the chance rebuilding case is concerned. One, they've ignored the material evidence relating to the case. They have not charged the people who stole over five or nearly $5 million given to the Saloon government by China. We don't report this. They're not, they're not charged. In fact, they made those people witnesses against um, uh, people who against people who work as government. In this case, one minister, the only prominent person who has served in cabinet in that in that uh, uh, trial is the former foreign minister, Samura Kamara. The question is, how about how about the other ministers, deputy ministers, to him? If really one for whole people in the past government. Uh, at the time when Samura Kamara and I being uh, foreign minister, there were two for deputy uh, ministers. Where are they? Why, why were they not charged? Really, you seriously say the crime? Because I don't see APC people in the argue. Um, some of them send me video for insist. Six of the APC people, six people who send me video, they insist for watcher. Because somebody has said the, this crime begin under an escrow in time. 
and that and believes that two million was stolen by Samura Kamara. APC people, and then send me down the, the time for I tell them, I, I don't look at that video. I know what you report and the evidence what we see. If we not get any any evidence of video, when I go reporter, you have your platforms. I haven't stopped anyone from publishing any evidence they have. But you cannot make accusations and expect me to say that me go report and provide the evidence. I talk about what I see, the evidence in front of me. If you got evidence, reporter. So they say the evidence talks say Samura say it'll be not in me not if two million. So what has that got to do with me? No, I report about what I have seen. We me seen that the Chinese government gives alone the four and five of that money happened the first week of March 2018. That money remained in the Kalikabal and take over, withdraw. The other money come That is the, the four million, yeah, five million. Then they give mother bill. Now, assuming say, we don't know if money is lost for the embassy. embassy. Why make the me for look at the uh, whatever we tell don't go make together with NGC for send me for look at. I tell them, look at the don't give me a flag in a fight. I'm not going to be investigated. We investigate. Look to what in the you here talk about what in the in front of me, the evidence in front of me. So, what I know is that the case in Freetown has nothing to do, they don't mention. The five million who we publish, what they are mentioning is totally different. The people that we the five million and nineteen, not worried about them. They're worried about who they think for two million dollars. So then for the question if I reply to the people that now, if you really hear looking at the, the foreign affairs ministry, and of me on the Murakama system. You cannot go in the loan out. You cannot talk about the minister, the deputy minister at the time, and uh, as Kuma, I think, appointed two deputy ministers who served in the foreign affairs ministry. Why the ACC not challenge them? Why the APC people are not concerned about that? What role did they play? They just did as dummies? That's dishonesty. And the chairs of the key individuals in the APC. And then, not only that, the director general of the foreign affairs ministry at the time. Is the uh, witnesses against the minister under the one that they Don't you see the selective approach of justice in that in that case? We are serious about corruption. We are serious for use. We are just serious about using corruption for which hunt on your opponents. There, I don't care which political party you belong. Both the APC, SLPP, NGC, we are all don't cost me. We are all don't gang up at one point or another. Dance. Gonna think the publication of me writing help una. when I feel say me writing there against una would have to organized course and parade. You cannot, you cannot, that doesn't move me. What moves me is evidence of me. And I'm saying when I hypocrisy and when I dishonesty, you can bring it my way. If I want to fight on a flag there, a fight, do it on your own. But you cannot bring it on my head. I speak about what is in front of me. What is in front of me is that there's concrete evidence published by the African Express, which shows money coming from China to Sierra Leone that the Chinese government gave between March to September 2018. That happened under uh, Mother Beard and Time. And between June 2019 to September 2019, they transferred me from Freetown to New York in the name of building an embassy. All the people who have been there, the foreign affairs ministry embassy in New York, we deal with that money. They've never been charged. They are made witnesses against the former foreign minister. Now, if we check under the scrum, at least four prominent people in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, two deputy ministers, one minister, and the director general, only the minister. Under the school, my foreign child. When you come to a uh, uh, mother during the time in 2019, the five how many ministers? Alikaba, as minister, you get a black two minutes. Okay, then at the MC, you get who do you get? You get a little Alikaba as ambassador. Get the ambassador, the two with the day. 
and on legal affairs and the other one, I think political or something. Mm -hmm. They're not charged. So you get three, you get one, two, at least three. Uh, four people then, we a major people then, Nabila Tunis, um, uh, Imran, um, Kanu as one of the deputy ambassadors. You get Kai Kai as an ambassador. You get Ali Kaba as minister, two ministers, two, um, uh, one ambassador, and two deputy ambassadors. They have never been charged. They are made witnesses against one politician. Who was former minister? Who now with a young party people who are referred on a flag bearer? Who are the, the you want to blame me? Because I they talk this true. If you say the true, no, they you know they help on a young crook politics on a depan crooked politics on a jamfa for talk say na me go blame and you begin to accuse me and my my views or my statements of fact, my statement of truth. Looking at the whole thing, they want to interpret and say the support for one politician. That is your own headache. It has nothing to do with me. You know, go stop me for talking to the talk so. You know, go it, whether you you una scatter on a party or you know get nothing for do with me. What concerns me is if any politician in a saloon will come forward and tell me say what talk say mother building transfer five million dollar to New York in 2019 a lie. I challenge anyone, APC politicians so beginning from Cherry Coco to NGC politician beginning with Kande Yom Kelai when I support us them. If anybody can able to tell me say when I talk say money came from China. In 2018, evidence not even telling that evidence. That is where we have a conversation. Or when I talk to transfer money in New York in 2019, when the APC people they talk this, they say that money I not transfer. I get that evidence. I come forward and tell me say indeed, I lie. Then we will talk about that. But if you say you. For you, you allegation. So, if you cannot deny and challenge the evidence that we have published, what do you want to talk about? You want me for support you for lie, for talk say because you don't talk say this corruption. Indeed, the the building chance with the chance to result in new building. It is a government house owned by the Salonian government way back from Tijaka Baden time. It is. That's why we have a mission. Then the money, the lobbying effort, the commitment for China to contribute money to Sierra Leone for the construction of an embassy was something that was seen at the school at the time. The African Express would not publish a work in July 2021. When I go back now, I'll be the Shia who would write to. we be the Shia, Sheba, Shia, and dance around. Would I be the, maybe when I share, I'll not be reader. Or when I feel, say, when I don't read them, I don't forget about that. No, we did not. We don't forget what we write. Do not forget to investigate, do not forget the evidence. It's there. The permanent record is in what we publish as we go there forever. You know the loss. So we publish the history of the chance rebuilding funding and the project. But what we showed again that even if the chance rebuilding was a problem, was an embarrassment to Australia, you the chance to build and the damage we don't cause at that embassy area day. In no other time, it happened on the mother building time. The permit for the construction for the renovation will get you today. There is not evidence for the prefix and the New York last week. Or this week, we pastor published two state of families from an independent hired by one of the neighbors who assessed the damage that was and what happened away embassy building. I don't publish any statement today. None of UNA, APCO, NGC, or SLPP, we want for cost because of this true what they talk. They will not say that I have one word, one transaction who are not produced to say what I am saying is not a good. What do you want to know about? You vex because the things they are not you back. Or for right about what they please you, a flag bearer. <laughs> you must be, you must be very interested. <laughs> so we are here because the Anticorruption Commission, a useless institution, it has no use. What I mean, useless, no use. Because there's useful 
and useless, useful when something is served in purpose. They use the user for this. User. But now, the purpose of the set up a control option for, for address and multiple corruption. But now, if we check on the Nescoma, if we check this corruption from Nescoma, and Mr. Wisdomana Kamana before the minister, you get four people there. One minister, two deputy minister, and director general. That's four. If you, then there are four. You count on an MRW, you get two ministers, you get at least uh, three ambassadors. There are five people, eh? nine people. Eh? All of them are at the administrative level. At the ministerial level. Eh? You get nine prominent people, including Director General under Samura Kamara. All the nine people there, the only person with a name, big people there, the only with a minister, deputy minister, with a, in charge of the ministries and the embassy, the ambassadors, deputy ambassadors, where you check the all nine, the one person only, nine day on trial for the chance rebuilding. Una Sierra Leone, I know you think, say, that's a problem for the country. Una know you think, say, that's a problem for the justice system of our country. Una know you think, say, that's a problem for law in our country. Una, or we could forget about law, justice, or politics. Human beings, as human beings, as human beings, when a mortal man, maybe when I get flesh, heart, conscience, nine people in. If I want to say crime, we don't commit, when I want to begin from the origin, at least there are nine people who worked in government in the foreign affairs ministry to the embassy in New York. Minister and deputy ministers. Have you asked yourself why the deputy ministers and other officials under Anes Koma in the foreign affairs who works with Samura Kamara have never been indicted? They clean. The genuine. Have you asked yourself why the current minister, the ministers under the current government and ambassadors, where you work in New York and Freetown, under Mada Bio, where this corruption happened, they've not been indicted, then clean, then free. And the opposition, where the car thinks that I'm the stampede, for me cannot talk without the talk so. Make cannot contribute sanity into this conversation. When I feel, say, down as uh, noise, my own lack of conscience and lack of character and lack of human heart. You can hit somebody, but when it comes to justice, when it comes to the truth, when it comes to the dispensation of justice, fair trial, human beings should be capable of identifying fairness and truth, regardless of whether it affects you, your relative, or anyone you support. That is what I stand for. So you've singled out one of your kind only <laughs> because we're all opposed to that. And we're want to bring me into the picture because I'm speaking what you people do not want to be told. And when I feel, say, when I, you, you will associate me with Samura Kamara or APC or, I don't care about that. When I don't call me all kind of APC, under Tijankaba, under Tijankaba, SLPP call me APC. APC come, then call me SLPP. SLPP, within SLPP, then say me a mother be a supporter. When Mada Biori na power, they say me na APC. Newspaper, they mean a newspaper and no writer. Some of them say that $5,000 they pay me for me to write about uh, corruption on that. <laughs> um, the Mada Bio. The president, your wife, in life, say, they may want, they may want to make a, maybe want to make this, uh, one job in their hand. I'm not unemployed. For be part of a system as corrupt as Sierra Leone, the most easy thing. So, now, because I did talk about this, the very APC people then, and NGC people then, and now they say that Samura Kamara is support. But when I talk about the corruption and the sellout nature of parliament, the very APC and NGC people now they defend the APC and the NGC in the parliament. What did I tell you? There is an alliance between the APC in parliament, the NGC, and the other opposition parties in parliament, together with MADABU. And this anti corruption case, and the singling out of only one individual as a target for the rest of all these politicians in these parties is part of the electoral process of 2023. Because in the APC, they've identified this particular character and politician as their target for the election. In the SLPP, they don't find out, say, this is a candidate that has the potential to beat Madabu in the, in the next election if he contests against him. That's fact. 
because you're not being for bitter in the past election. So those in the APC who remained dissatisfied with the appointment or selection of Samura Kamara in 2018, they undermined his campaign, still believe they should undermine his campaign. One way they want to do it, now for wrap this case in my head with the publication that has nothing to do with Africa. And they want to say, Samu Africa is a wiggy, Samura Kamara. No, not a wiggy. Now, who now the APC politicians, who are friends in the opposition, we form alliance, we build COP as an opposition alliance, that's an opposition alliance for Wuna, the parliamentary leaders. Now, when I decide, say, you have to eliminate a potential contender to be you, and a potential contender to you in your flag bearer competition. So that shows that your common opposition unity, a unit of opposites, the opposition has a unity in parliament, not because they are all united, because they all don't identify a common opponent for them. The SLPP has a benefit in that because NCC the then prefer um, a candidate. If if we say APC, SLPP can be defeated, they want an opposition candidate that is their own choice. And they have found that alliance in parliament, whether they accept them or not. That's a fact. And why many of the parliamentary politicians in the APC have not been accused of corruption, not because they are not corrupt, because there's no corruption that happened under Anes Kuruma in the 10 years of Anes Kuruma in the administration, where you excuse uh, the current parliamentary leader of the APC, Chenno Ramadan Majuba. No. All the agreement that we passed. Not only that he's a favorite of Anes Kuruma, but he was a key leader, a key parliamentarian that superintended all of the mining agreements and other kinds of agreements where it cost the country loss. So if you get a commission of inquiry in Sierra Leone, you have a statement. Yes, I don't hear one of the opposition people that often they talk say the opposition in the parliament, um, uh, um, not only the parliament corrupt, parliament is not corrupt way back, of course. But if we have to look at corruption in the past regime, why did you excuse parliament? Which are the role of the current opposition leader in the parliament, General Ramadan Majuba, in the corruption of the APC under Anes Kuruma? He was head of the parliamentary committees on mining, accountability committee. All of them they participate in, 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 in these mining committees, passing up these mining agreements, including even telephone companies, where he provided legal services for some of them. Celtel, uh, all these companies, check. And you will want to talk about corruption. Because of the highlight of my wife can't say when they stampede me and accuse me of membership or support for social. No, you cannot get that passed through my head. The fact of the matter is that there is no corruption that happened under the APC. If we are going to do holistic corruption in Sierra Leone, all of these individuals should have no place in, in, in the politics of Sierra Leone because they are damn corrupt. They worked in a corrupt regime. If I say there was corruption, indeed there was corruption. And all of those mining agreements did not pass through parliament like that. At some point, Chairman Ramadan Majuba was himself a deputy speaker of parliament. In the hierarchy of the administration, the organic administration of Sierra Leone, that was number four powerful person in the, in, in the APC. They are the level of governance. The president, vice president, the speaker, and the deputy speaker are the four, at least in a hierarchical order, in a pyramid scheme. That is the fourth person. How did you excuse that individual from the corruption investigations when I do? The very individuals are now they wrap up the same corruption on, on their own colleagues. And you want to blame me because I'm highlighting the selective approach to fighting corruption. And you want to talk about corruption in the past? We can talk about corruption in the past. But I, I guarantee you, when we talk about corruption in the past, all of UNA, you, sh you, 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 you should be chained. Because if you then check how, how, mu how much you were worth in 2007 when the APC was coming to power and how much you are worth today, well, I even sit and say, run away from her. Because you did not accumulate what you accumulated rightly. It's through the corrupt relationships, through political corruption and other kinds of financial corruption. But we'll get to that. And I'm ready to go, to go, go into these conversations now because we have an opportunity of looking at the whole picture in a cinematic way, which will not be seen between 2007 to 2018, we are able to see it now. That is what investigation do, do for you. Struggling 
across time and across regimes. So the data one for say that the trial is now moving to New York from Freetown, not because there is evidence to be found in New York. No, because they just want to waste time and waste money. And, and, and they are not really fighting against corruption. They are using anti-corruption commission as a tool. The same they are using the current anti corruption the same way they used anti-corruption commission in 2012. And if you come check now when we come for this course, you can find that these very characters there, that is how they've been able to put themselves in the in the national stage. The question is how what is the relationship between Adam Macaulay and, and the current parliamentary leader of the of the of the opposition in parliament? How is their relationship tied to the current case? against their own uh, former flag bearer, their own party member, who they are. Now, excuse me, say, media support Samura Kamara. Not only have been going to Cambia, go announce that they support Samura Kamara. What has that got to do with me? You can you can choose anybody you want. My work is going to continue because when I, there is going to be corruption in Sierra Leone. Because the reason why you have all of these crooked ways and means to fight, using institutions to fight each other, because you, do, you don't want to get, you don't want to run good governance. We don't want to build a governance arrangement that is decent, that is transparent, and that is accountable to the masses, that's accountable to the common good of the people. So you always desire for use institutions and laws for destroy each other in the process for making able to put yourself in positions where you steal money, theft, public money. That's what politics is about in Sierra Leone. So, but I hold the commitment as a journalist in this case for lay out the facts as they are, whether you accept it or not, it's not, not my business. My business is to, show, is to show them and also help to introduce sanity into a conversation. So I'm saying, before I take the break, I just repeat what I say. If these people want to talk about corruption in the Foreign Affairs Ministry as it relates to the Chancery Building, they have at least nine former and current public officials and at the level of minister and deputy minister, both in Anes Kuruma's government and the current government, the question is why did out of all those nine people, now only one person, the former foreign minister, Samura Kamaranen, put on trial and accused? How about his deputy, two deputy uh, ministers? How about the uh, director general? In fact, director general, now one of the witnesses against them. Then in the current government, all of the ministers and ambassadors and deputy ambassadors we received the money in 2019 we carry out and left the uh, project the way it is we had even interact with the neighbors in 2019 they wanted they all back now witnesses against one individual out of the nine prominent people in the world and then justice dandy a fight against corruption dandy that when i know you see the smell of injustice it smells of hypocrisy it smells of political uh, repression it smells of uh, uh, the use of the Anti-Corruption Commission for go after political opponents, the same way you did in 2012, the same way you did uh, in 2018. Anyway, I'm taking a break and come back and uh, continue this, this discussion. I never wanted to push this beyond one hour, 30 minutes, but it looked like I would do another 15 minutes before we close. We'll still continue this conversation as we move along. But I, I hope that I've made my point here that what we have right now is not a trial, is, 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 is a collaborative effort of opposition politicians in parliament who have built an alliance with BO, alliance among themselves, who want to take over the APC. And not only that, they have also, um, they are using the ACC the same way. And many of these people are lawyers then. Those, the same way they're saying are, are lawyers that were head the Anti-Corruption Commission. So they found the process of making sure they are building a state in future, a draconian state that's going to be superintended by lawyers. And, and when you get crooked lawyers and at the level of the, of the state, it's a danger for the country. It's going to be worse than the army. Gorilla army, we may coup. It will be worse than that. And that now, the danger will face. This is way beyond Madabio. It's way beyond Samura Kamara. It has to do with uh, dangerous politicians who have built alliances across parties. Many of them lawyers, uh, uh, also found in civil society across parties from SLPPA, APC, you know, the, this is not the state capture. So it's not a case of where Madhavi captured the institution, it's a case of where these independent, these opposition forces from lawyers to from uh, founding institutions from parliament to the ACC, to the judiciary, and even outside of parliament, the political parties don't come together and then capture the state. They are in the police department. I just make it, they see all this drama, they happen. 
this campaign of disinformation involving even state institutions. This is why it's happening, because the opposition are actually, the, these opposition groups, interest groups who don't form this coalition, they are the de facto government. They are the perpetrators of violence across the country. The same way they use an escrow to, to create the constitutional crisis under the APC and rob it off his head and participate in the corruption and thief and then hide and put the corruption in the head. The same way they use Madabe to commit this political and constitutional atrocities where they happen, including the, the mass killing of people there. We have to look at this thing holistically. Otherwise, we, we deal with a danger whose cause and whose perpetrators we, we risk jumping over. So we have to look at the, the country now holistically because if we not do that and, and see some of these hidden forces where we don't identify, it could be a problem. And that is the danger we have to uh, really pay attention to. So I want to thank you uh, for being here. Like I say, I already are there on the road. I mean, um, broadcasting from Kentucky, Louisville, at the University of Louisville this weekend. And I hope to continue um, this, this conversation in a much more uh, coherent way. Well, uh, after the break, I will read the small court papers about the Samura Kamara presence here. Um, hopefully, we'll take this to two hours. I don't be one for do that, because I, but I think so we'll ex extend that. So. Um, let's take a break. I want to invite more people then for the rest of the next 30 minutes where you don't left. So we will anchor the conversation. You know, we're done in one day. We'll continue the other parts in, in future. I'll come back in a short, short while. Okay, so uh, we don't do one hour 28 minutes in this um, conversation. I want to read um, a couple of the, the uh, what do they call it, uh, pre-conference approved, pre-trial conference orders. Honorable Mr. Justice Fisher, Jr. And this was um, from the Law Courts Building, Shaka Stevens Street, Freetown. Dated 17 October 2022. 17 today, I think. Okay. Um, Justice Fisher signed and stamped this on the 20th of October, nine days ago. So, what happened now? Um, the non decide said in the Guna, this is the case between the state, the state versus Saiduna Lo and, and the others. Of course, the most prominent here, you know, is Samura Kamara, the 2018 flag bearer of the APC. So they say on the third day of October, the court held a pre-trial conference with a view to putting modalities in place for the court to visit the site. I then get the legal but I know I'm for it, the site of the Chancery Building in New York. So basically, then the site say then, then they put modality for me and Canada, New York for can visit the the building. And I remember that video, then video that were released, we're going to the building, the courts, people and say, say, in the Canada, New York, you can't see the building, the judge. And you know, all the people and the suspect that now the accused persons and now the lawyer there, they don't get opportunity for Canada, New York. They want to take part for them. So I read to that. As a result of orders I granted, the accused persons and their lawyers were given an opportunity 
to advise the court as to their intentions with regard to the visit. Consequently, the court received the following affidavit from the, all accused persons, save for the sixth accused person. So they receive, the court say, Fisher say, they all for, then they can and the can see the building, this building here where they know it's money where they put Samura Kamara. So they receive one, a letter written by Mohammed Pamomo Fona on behalf of the first and third accused persons. Then sworn affidavits sworn to by the first and third accused persons. The second, the other thing, a letter from the second accused persons counsel, the lawyer will represent the second accused person. I will read the name, but I already know. A, a letter and sworn affidavit from the fourth accused, a letter and sworn affidavit from the fifth accused. It is expedient to set out in some detail the contents of the affidavits and letter from the accused persons, the first accused person. So the first person, I think this aside, do not look. Number one. It said the first accused person submitted a sworn affidavit dated 11th October 2022. That we will be now released that video now, covering a letter in which he swore to the following. They say, I do not know, I think they are the first accused person. In talk, say, with the majority of the counts, they get the most, the, the plenty charge, then they get charge past all. You know, Samura Kamara, it's not two charge you get. Anyway, in say, uh, it is imperative that he attends the visit with, the, with his counsel, in one for car with his lawyer. However, currently does not have the means to travel, and he barely has enough to sustain his family, including his wife and children. So I do not say, although they were in Guam for Canada, New York, but right now, because of the case, we don't put all them on there, it didn't court back and forth. You know, the, the case, the, now one year so now, almost. The number over 50 adjournment. Uh, it's not able for, they're not able for, <laughs> um, you know, able for sustaining himself, you're not able to pay for himself. He can, however, take care of himself in New York. Two friends, if you can't, so you get side for day, you get party, you make it, you get side for later, so we transport for Waka Waka Utam and all that in the day. But you know, we'll get, you know, get money for take care of your family itself. So you know, we'll pay for a lawyer, you know, we'll pay for yourself for camp. But if you come, you must get one or two parties. We will say, we will sorry for that. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't sleep there next time in Palo. You will sleep at the couch. So that's all that, that's all he say. That he's unable to fund the trip for his for his consul in lawyer travel to New York as he is rend, as he is rendering pro bono services to him during the, his trial. In fact, the lawyer will represent and the representative for free right now, unable to pay himself. You see? That he's currently exploring ways through friends to fund the trip and accommodation for his consul to New York. So right now, what did they look for? They can big party them back. Although they get party there, we go allow for me. If you can in New York for make the cash to them so that the parlor said go sleep day during that 10 day but if they big party them back we see if you help them get money for me buy tickets for you a lawyer for Canada New York that it will be in the interest of justice and fairness if at least the return air ticket to New York is paid for him by the state so it don't beg the beg the court say do ya for justice in sake pay the fair way for pay for a a lawyer or a lawyer, do ya? So in say, so you don't get money, maybe the government help her. The second, in the second accused submitted a covering letter dated in which he informed the court he does not intend to travel to New York and will nominate his uh, solicitor, Brahma Kuruma, to travel to New York. Further, he will fund the trip of this solicitor for trip inclusive of accommodation. So Brahma Kuruma in your in your possibly the representative say in Canada New York, but go he go pay for America. The third accused submitted a sworn affidavit dated 11th October 2022 with a covering letter in which he swore to the following facts that he would have loved to travel to New York to attend the low cost. However, he currently does not have the means to travel. So plenty of people in Naya. Then talk say that it will be in the interest of justice and fairness of at least the return air ticket to New York is paid for him by the state. The fourth accused submitted a covering letter in which he affirmed that he will travel to New York and one consul and will bear the cost of Tabisa Samura Kamara. In say, 
in Gukana, New York, and you go pay for INSEF with a your lawyer for making them come. And you go pay for the accommodation. So you don't want the government for pay for them. You know, bigger than pay for them. So since in the car, they say in the counter in New York, you go come for INSEF. You go pay for INSEF for making them come. So plenty of the people in Naya, they go for, uh, now they say they pay for themselves. So, So now, so, now, so they don't agree, say that he has not been okay. I want to see what the judge say after all, all this now. So, the judge, af, after hearing all these parties, it is hereby ordered Fisher, that illegal judge, we're not supposed to practice the way the lawyer they say, not supposed to practice law and asylum. Now, we say one, the anti corruption commission shall source funding from the government of Sierra Leone to facilitate the movement of the court to New York. To conduct, you know, that side visit, and then called local locus inco inco. I don't know how they pronounce it anyway. Between the thirty day of October and the sixth day of November, twenty twenty two, in the following manner. So the thirtieth of November of October, then at tomorrow, self. And the sixth day of November, then one week, in the following manner. One, they need a return air ticket for the presiding judge and the court registrar from Freetown to New York and back to Freetown. Now, the money, they didn't pay for it, money back up. And this one, they don't eat a million, million dollars in the New York building. Now, remember when they do the trial, like, like trial, then they come back with money. Two, return air ticket for two prosecutors from the ACC, from Freetown to New York and back to Freetown. Three, per diem for the presiding judge and the court registrar for the duration of the visit. Four, per diem for the prosecutor for the duration of the trip. Five, return air ticket for the first and third accused from Freetown to New York and back to Freetown. Number six, return air ticket for consuls for the first, third, and the fifth accused from Freetown to New York and back to Freetown. The return air tickets should be routed via Dakar to New York and return as it will represent a cheaper outlay on government resources. The above orders are <laughs> in the interest of justice. So I don't see it. This is now Fisher, Adrian Fisher, the signer, Honorable Adrian Fisher, 20th October, 2022, signed the Justice of the Superior Courts of Judicature. Hmm. The Honorable Justice Fisher Jr. So I don't know now what's going to happen with the chance rebuilding case. I have laid out the um, parameters of the uh, case, and I don't publish. Then there's there are two testimonies of the uh, neighbor, one of the neighbors who sued the government of Sierra Leone through the embassy. Now court in New York, then we don't win for the first uh, aspect of the case, which is an argument against the embassy. The embassy people, the way this thing they happen, then talk say, then not for be put on trial, then get diplomatic immunity. The court in New York, the Southern District uh, Court of New York, under the presiding judge Edgardo Ramos, don't rule, say the Sierra government. The, dipl the diplomats, them in New York, they're not, get, they're not able to claim immunity for the destruction of their neighbor's property to the abandoned building. And, and more forget about even the destruction to the neighbor and property, that the fact that the building as it is so, it they undervalue the property, they own that area. They, all of the, the value of the property of that area, they, they go down, they depreciate because of that one building, that is, that is in that the property valuation. That's what it does. It don't turn the place to a wreckage. So now that make 21 neighbors there already get complaints against the Sierra Leone mission in New York, diplomatic embarrassment to the extent that the court in New York don't revoke the immunity of the embassy for saying they right for Sudan accord for the damages that they've caused, not just to their immediate neighbors, but even to the neighborhood. So don't, for, don't forget that we might be having more cases to the point that we're not going to repair the damage that sell, go for end up for sell the building maybe. And not only that, before these people then fend way for 
all are linked about it. And, and the people that were transferred this morning in 2019, over 5 million, if we don't fix that building, they're still deep in politics one year now. Now, what they don't add on top of it? The judge don't say they're all for work in New York. They're not the only kind in New York. Then they come with the lawyer then and the court registrar and the corruption prosecutors. But now New York and now the government, now we own money than they pay back, taxpayers' money on top of the back for can't see the building. In addition to that, then they pay per diem to themselves for that for one week. The question is, is this in the interest of justice, in the interest of the image of Sierra Leone? And don't forget, say, Mother Bio say he has been traveling, looting billions of uh, Leones, millions of dollars out of the Central Bank of Sierra Leone for travel around the world because they repair the image of Sierra Leone. Here we have the image of Sierra Leone in the United Nations in New York. And the only thing which makes the Americans give Mother Bio visa for car America now because in the way he came to the UN. He came to the UN in 2018. He came to the UN in 2019. If you don't see the b image of the building, if the building be done there, that state where Samura Kamara and other people have been done eat this money, why did they not include it in 20? In they did not raise it in 2018, 2019. Only after the African Express published, say, Mother Bureau and young people they don't use the building in construction, they don't transfer five million, they don't chop her. I tell they say, Mongo Fenba, good an APC for whole. So the opposition in parliament, because of their leadership struggle, their effort for overthrow the party, these generational people then, with their lawyers and their effort for get rid of the party, then build this case together with Madabio and their alliance on their former flag bearer and their part, so-called party comrade. Because the evidence will be published is very clear. It has nothing to do with anything other than the, trans the receipt of money in 2018 by Madabio from China and the transfer of that money to New York in 2019, and the fact that the money was stolen by these officials from Freetown to New York. And we must emphasize all of the people that were involved in that transaction in 2018, 2019, under Mother they are all not on trial. The person on trial is one minister under Ernest Kuruma, and also the people with that minister, they work with that ministry, they, they are all not on trial. One of them is the is Deputy Director General, I mean the Director General of the Foreign Affairs Ministry, I think Tadija to Bashir, when Adema Kali in Mama, Naina, one of the witnesses against her. Adema Kali was the anti corruption commission under Anes Kuruma. Uh, this, yeah, he never investigated that at the time. And now, as a lawyer, he's representing, supposedly representing Samura Kamara in a matter that supposedly a corruption that happened under the time when they were in charge of the anti corruption commission. And his mom is one of the witnesses, listed witnesses against Samura Kamara in the trial when in Mamasa woke at the uh, uh, Foreign Affairs Minister of the General. Does that make sense? Oh, now one more repeater. You can know here. May I see the comments? But one more repeater says so I can repeat if I see the comments. But what am I saying? Both the APC and the SLPP found an interest and an opportunity for, for indict their own opponent, both within the party and outside of the party, uh, with the case that and evidence we point to the for to the SLPP. And now they, now they can't say me for go look video with them with them produce say the own party person talk say the, the trial be happening under in your own time. Okay, Bobo Leon B. Uh, don't post say repeat, Mr. Bar. Uh, Zainab also Kamara say repeat. What are they saying that? The corruption where they hold Samura Kamara for, at the time when I've been foreign minister, I've been getting two deputy foreign minister there. He been getting the director general of the foreign affairs minister, director general of foreign affairs minister, the permanent, the permanent secretary. Now, in in your own case, the director general now the foreign affairs ministry, now one of the witnesses against them, that witness day, now Ade Macaulay, the former anti-corruption commissioner, now in Mama. And the corruption when they talk about something, that corruption will be happy under the school, but it happened at the time where Adema called it, they all that, they begin at the ACC. So they're not being investigated. But now, where the corruption case is in the, one of the lawyers, the way they say they represent Samura, in the case where Imamana witness against the, the, the client who they represent. You don't get that? In the ministry of the past government, now that one person, the other four people, they're all one a witness, the other two, not mentioned. Deputy ministers. Under Madabio, they get about five top officials 
two ministers, one amb ambassador, because Ali Kaba will contact minister ambassador, so I will call him minister of foreign affairs. Nabila Tunis, minister of foreign affairs. Kai Kai was ambassador. Although the minister, I will say the ambassador. The two of the deputy ambassadors and five, they were all, with the exception of Nabila, they all are witnesses against Samura in the case. So in nine officials, they went for the wrong way. The one bond rule, for corruption, they were only for bond rule together, put them on trial. Now one person only they put on trial. When I, do, when I see the opposition and the ruling party, the, the, the effort, eh? why? Because both in the, in the opposition party, now a challenger to them. Both in the opposition, a challenger to them. And you know, go put this past. And these characters, they are all, they only fight not just for be at the helm of affairs of the party, flag bearer competition, they fight also to control the executives of the party. I think my colleague is fighting to be Secretary General. And we check him, he's connected to the parliamentary leader of the party. Now they don't camp that, now they don't flank that. That is who they are, the parliamentary opposition, not their own group. They don't want me to say this, but these are the facts. So if they really care about justice, they will be concerned about the $5 million that was lost between 2018 when Mother Bio came to power to 2019 when the money was transferred. But now the very people that now want me for good look video with and don't make say, we should say the construction with Mother Bio that started in 2021 when they get permit for, they're not complete, and they're not able to account for the $5 million in question. Will and transfer 2019. If the problem was there when, before Mother Bill took power, it don't matter why it not be addressed the problem, but then transfer money in the name of the building. Now, even if the non tiff money 2018, I mean before 2018 and 2019, why now one person only under the past government and in that the minister only really in the ministry in the sense because the other one, then these are just added names other names but up and above that we don't get to a situation where mother bill visited new york visited america not because of ordinary point because they cannot the u.n general assembly the americans are now visa he's coming to america both in 2018 2019 up to now you got to do with the u.n general assembly. 2018 if you don't see say, the embassy in like iraq 2019 if you don't see in iraq if you don't see this wreck in iraq we we a building abandoned by the APC because they've stolen the money. And if we don't include them at the COI report, if we don't include them, the APC people, the way they fight the young flag, they say that nah, me put the case in Samura in here because African space problem. No, we saw corruption under BO. We saw corruption under Mother BO. Why? Because Mother BO can't have power. He talks, say, he organized COI, he do GTT report, they do forensic thing, they go after APC people, they go after members of the previous government, say corruption done, done under a new term. He defied corruption. What we set out for doing, I was sure saying, I lie, mother, build a lie. From in the president, in WEF, all the government agencies, they all get corruption. Well, if that is the why would we should say David Francis, nearly $4 million, they don't misuse her in procurement funds. They don't go hold uh, the previous people away in the day. Why uh, we will publish about all of these other ministries, including the fact, say, uh, NASIT, over $6 million, neighbor account, and 60.9 billion, neighbor account for them. I'm not talking about that. Why would I not talk? Why would I not go hold other people there again? So in this case, they will not say now a uh, government for being not see the case. No, the government in, inherited the chance rebuilding project and transfer five million dollars. What happened to the five million dollars? Now let's say then take five million dollars in 2019, then complete the building and say, but other money be done the way they're not complete, that will be holding people and they for be make sense. But your money, where you transfer five million dollars, you know, user. And you're not going to talk about this issue until the public they go find somebody try to you go hold on then only not only then then so this is a clear example of how the state the opposition says that they don't capture these state institutions in a way their friends and their colleagues their alliances with the state where they don't build they have function not just as advisors but as co-collaborators in the use of state institutions against their own opponents because Many of these people are friends, are colleagues. They went to school together. They took the bar exam together. They attended, uh, they are collegial. They belong to the same club, school clubs and everything. So they have found a material interest in supporting each other, both in the past and in the present in preparation for the future. In 20, leading up to 2012, 2010, 2011, the whole country talk about constitutional review. You don't understand 2013, leading up to 2018, we talk about constitutional review. For review the constitution because the constitution of Sierra Leone get enormous powers we give to the presidency and all about in there. 
We don't do this review till under Justice Cowan. The review never became not seen final day. All of them people that way caused this, and then, and then they are the opposition in the parliament now. There's no way we can blame that alone on an escroma without putting together the leaders we constitute, the key people that win an escroma, your key adherents. You might call them the Kuroma East in the APC. They have the condition. And they start with their parliamentary leader, you extend them right across you know, to party members so I can say these things because I've seen them, I don't see them, I don't see them. So I can say them because I have many of our party people that know what I talk to saying are true. They, know, they cannot say it because of political expediency. They want to get vote. They want to make sure they can contest. Then they don't want to annoy Una. They don't want to make Una party support us. But I can say it, you know, to APC member, I don't look to be your member. Now you don't trouble that. <laughs> so, but why I say this? In 20... 18, if we don't get a good new constitution, if we don't democratize power in a salon, restore more power to the people and, and, and ensure more checks and balances and control and more democratization, we can get an opportunity under the school. The same way they then reform the, the ACC and give more power. But these same politicians, because them, they imagine themselves as inheritors of the state, that they, that they program and school and pump them up into what they call Supremo after you and you. The same people that I don't brand the mother to this monster. I feel like say we mother be great no more, all man they die. So they make this fear where in actual fact the same way they hide behind the shadows of Kuruma and propel them for create the atrocious constitutional violations and participate in the corruption way take place. And the same way they are hiding behind this uh, Muppet as a, as a president and they cause all this thing. Now, the constitutional review it and kill under the Skoma, they don't move ahead now in parliament, they don't pass all dangerous laws. Then you begin for count now. Cyber Act, the parliament passer. The, this currency act, the parliament passer. The uh, public elections law will give the president more power for and the electoral commission more power for determining. I know that now, I know, I know need to explain. For political public elections act of 2022, parliament. The um, how you call it? Right now, political parties act 2020 for make sure say smaller party they don't go to survive. Nobody will form a new party easily. That they depend try for person. The Central Intelligence National Security Central Intelligence Act way if you way complementary to the Cyber Act. That the same thing. We will just arrest opposition based on the idea of Central Intelligence. You don't understand, eh? Say we suspect you, seize your computer, and things like that. And they pass up. They don't even pass this for help, matter you. Then they imagine, say, at the level of parliament, after Mada Biona, they're going to take over government. And when they take over government, there are lawyers, many of them lawyers. Check them from your parties to the opposition winner, them party. So all the ones, many of them are lawyers. Now imagine with this kind of dangerous laws, dangerous constitution, with dangerous secondary legislation we don't pass in these four to five years now. We check all the laws we don't pass. Now, anti democratic law from cyber legislation to so not the matter be one do this. So this is why parliament has to be held squarely responsible. When opposition of parliament, they are the real cancer to our democracy today. They are the cancer to the fight against corruption. They are poison to national development and national cohesion until we are able to single them out and put them in front of the people and address the issues that we're talking about. We'll be making a dangerous mistake. And me, I don't decide to say, the opportunity that I have, and which is why I'm very grateful to then and now for giving me this opportunity. Nobody knows say I not say I will continue to say it, say it, say it continuously. If you're not listening, tomorrow you will say I don't say But what you have is a group of lawyers, members of parliament, in parliament and outside of parliament who have schemed at least from 2010 to now, using state institutions like the ACC for, for Mosul and propel themselves to where they are. Mosul, they are opening and propel themselves, and they are imagining a draconian legal state under their control, corrupt state under their control. That is the danger that we have to be concerned about. And the North CC then find a moped, they don't left Madabio and wife, made them with go and do all the thing there. And then they under the prepare the stage. That's what they're doing. We want change in a saloon. Of course, we are all fed up with the dictatorship of the Bureau regime. 
We have exposed it. We don't write about corruption of Madabu. Show sure, every facet. There's no guess. Nobody in the opposition or the ruling party will be able to challenge any of the evidence that we've published. And we're going to publish more. We are returning to our Saturday, I mean Sunday uh, routine. And that's one of, one of the reasons why I come here right now. But mobilize my own team and develop a schedule leading up to the election. I'm more determined than ever to expose graft and corruption across institutions and across the political class. That I mean determination. I'm ready for the one without hesitation. And I will do it ferociously. But I want to remind um, the people of Sierra Leone and those of you who are watching that what you have in front of you is beyond political parties. It's about the soul of the country, the life of the country, the future of the generations yet unborn. If we're not able to address this, it's going to be a very uh, tedious situation. The discussion done long, we are now getting to two hours. I, in, in the next part three of this conversation, I will go back to 2018 and 2012 and show how the two incidents and they relate to the current case. But what I'm trying to say, if we are serious about accountability, we already have internal accountability systems that we need to develop for, at the level of parliament, um, the parliamentary accountability committee, to the accountant general's department, to the audit service, right up to the central bank. They should be able to control corruption and control graft and control waste. If anyone steals money, the laws them, we talk about theft and criminality and the theft of public funds should be able, law enforcement, we will deal with them. The CIA, the criminal investigations department should be able to investigate them and charge them to court. The court should be able to find them guilty and sentence them without an anti-corruption commission. We will begin to make the case to international people for stop funding the anti-corruption commission. It is now a weapon in the hands of corrupt politicians with a user for the new uh, party fights in an election. It has become an anti-democratic institution. It is going to be used, you know, it's, it's, it's used, it's no longer there. It, 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 we had a good intention to bring this, but instead of serving its manifest function, it is now, it has become latent. It is a latent attributes that it has achieved, thanks to the effort of these rogue politicians in parliament, mostly APC politicians, APC politicians. And they found relevance in uh, in their alliance with Madabu because they see Madabu as a moped that they can use to consolidate and then subvert power. In the end, they will do to Madabu the same thing or worse than what they have done to an Eskrumayla Gerontokras in their party. I say that, and but the, but the consequence, not to, not to down in the sofa, when the country gave a sofa. Because when you have rogues behaving in this kind of way, they are worse than the cartels, than the drug cartels in Latin America. And that the problem that we will continue to uh, appeal to international organizations, international friends of Sierra Leone, who are engaging in Sierra Leone to make it as a condition of their engagement, the scrutinization of all of these organizations and individuals who are putting themselves forward as a credible uh, representatives of the people. We have to be concerned about the environment, the dictatorial environment that's been nurtured both at the level of parliament and across other institutions through the development of legislations where that has the implication, they have the implication of, of nurturing a dangerous legal state. And that is what we have to be concerned about. And at that, and at that now we worry. So I will say that and thank many of you for listening and for paying attention. I see we got an appreciable audience today. Um, I'm still developing the process, the competence for Siago the Redent here. So um, before I go, I know Siago already talked about the Anti-Corruption Commission, his weaponization. I don't address the, the role of the opposition in uh, uh, the current chantry building case and how it's, it has to be looked into. But above, up and above all, when I went to New York, the East Coast, when I go to the chantry building uh, around this dinner peak, if I want to also go there, I want to see uh, the, the visitation of the judge. I want to ask her, we got to look how much they've spent. I want to make them finish their travel. They will publish the details of each and every person in Padiem, including Fisher. Um, among the people that come around here, one they wait up say no one. Some people come around and say no one they own money you go pay for insects. So uh, 
you guys should follow up. That is coming up between the 30th of October to the 6th of November, from what I read on the court papers. And um, I know some of them I know already say, well, it was going to happen. We said online about that, so I, I brought it to your notice. I will take one small break. I want to talk about the Mamadi Dumbuya in 10 minutes before I go. I think they necessary to make a add one small comment on the Guinean military visit and why people think it's new. It's not new. Not the first time this would against a Guinean military influence or, or demonstration as alone. But I, I want to take this break. We can all make him I know I may mix into the conversation on corruption. So thank you. I'll come back for a just brief 10 minute comment before I go. Yeah. Okay. So I, I want to make this. Uh, I got for um, make this comment briefly. That um. Uh, so before I make a comment, I don't read to the court papers. According to the court papers, that this week where they come nine. Uh, the visit for them happen. So you got for when I got for cross check that and see whether they are going to do that or not. But I basically read the paper. Whether they will change their mind or not, that's upon them. But we are watching and we will take the computers and aggregate the numbers and see how many people, how much money they are going to spend. We don't see the intention. They don't already give a legal basis for them car one. Why they want Canada, New York and the, the money where they want to spend. So if they do that, we're going to publish the details. If they don't do that, so it's upon the body already have papers and orders on that. So and if they decide to change the schedule, we will update you again on that. So that is um, what we have learned. Um, but anyway, before I go, I saw, I think yesterday, we, we see this uh, military troops of uh, army officers coming into cell. Was it yesterday? Well, these two days, I've seen the social media and, and much of the conversation online has been about the the military visit of um, uh, the junta leader in, in Guinea uh, to Sierra Leone. I think it's one of his first uh, international travels. Came with a convoy of uh, military vehicles and, and shoulders, well armed shoulders. And I don't see the conversation around no, uh, you know, suddenly so we make them a topic, talk about the man in the show, military might, and, and all of that. That's, that is not really something way unusual for military officers that travel across countries where we bother each other. And I don't think it should be even an issue of of, uh, of uh, serious conversation because there are more serious issues on 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 floor. The issue of the corruption in the parliament the issue of the ECSL, the fact that they have not released the provisional voters register with the numbers up to now, and, and um, the idea that parliament is still passing draconian legislation, the, the political parties act, and the uh, National Security and Central Intelligence Act, the new agreements or revenue collections when they do, what I don't know about, and all of these things that are happening in parliament, those should have been the, the actual issues. But I do understand why people concerned about army and the show of military might. But this is not the first time it happened at Saloon. The Guinean army has had significant influence on Sierra Leonean politics. Sheka Stevens, for example, in the 70s, because got Guineans to German and come in Saloon. And um, um, they were providing security for him. When Sheka Stevens and other people were overthrown in 1967, uh, he stayed in exile for the most part. John Bangura and other people, they all they organized in Guinea and train people in Guinea to come invade and remove the military government when it became apparent that the National Reformation Council was not going to leave power and they were overthrown by young army officers later on and, and they brought Sheikha Steven back from exile. Even when they come off from exile, the Kantik power in Guinea was escorted by Guinean, Guinean shoulders. Um, so not only for <laughs> Guinean shoulders with might, 
Uh, you see that Tijan Kaba as well. When Tijan Kaba was kicked out of power, who said been there? He didn't have Guinea. Stay there for a long time. I didn't coordinate the military operation where he on Tijan Kaba and power. Guinea's, Guinea's army played a significant role in that, in the restoration of the of the ousted government of Tijan Kaba after the AFRC coup. We know, we know that. This is a recent history. So um, part of the reason, again, you cannot compare with military might, Dwarfu army. No, we know they compare the Salinan army and the Guinean army because they're two different uh, ideological armies, two different, I don't call it, but two different orientational armies. One is of British orientation and the other is of French orientation. So the discipline in the army and the, the approach um, to national security and national warfare are different. As a journalist, when I travel, while I travel across Africa, I find out, say, in English-speaking countries, where if I introduce myself, I can't on any airport or any border point, and introduce myself as a journalist, and they get easy passage, then they allow you pass. But when I see me as a journalist, and enter a French country, whether it's Guinea, Conakry, and you know other places i get more scrutinized they, they, then they check me more than when than in english speaking countries that tells you our approach to national security is different the french they pay more attention speaking countries pay more attention to intelligence intelligence gathering national security more than most um they are more paranoid about that than english speaking countries from my own experience from my own observation so that can account for uh, the show of a uh, show of mind and make will not forget the Guinean army itself for tell about how they serious about national security and national defense now one of the only armies in Africa that has repelled foreign military aggression successfully repelled in a way I know they count Ethiopia um, I'm talking about 1970 because we get this uh, uh, the Ethiopian army in, in those that I'm talking about, maybe Massey West Africa or one of the only. So meaning there, there's another. But in 1970, the Guinean uh, Portuguese invasion of Guinea happened within 40, for overthrow the government of uh, uh, Sheikh Touré. What happened? In 48 hours, the Guinean army and the Guinean politicians and everybody, national defense, everybody rose to the defense of the country and drove the foreign invaders. These were um western invasion of guinea the same way that happened in libya so when you check that in fact when you equator um guinea and maybe guinea and, and ethiopia with the war against italy the italian invasion of ethiopia and then um cuba now this is now one of uh, three countries we will check in history with that exceptional uh effort for repel foreign aggression within the shortest possible time, the Bay of Pigs in Cuba is still, you know, in their national imagination. Guinea self, 1970, uh, Portuguese invasion of Guinea, backed by other Western countries, really. And the successful um, uh, effort of the Guinean army and, and their defense apparatus at the time for repel uh, So subsequent to that, now ask yourself, which country today including Libya, Muammar Gaddafi with all in uh, uh, might, was unable to um, defeat foreign invasion, NATO invasion of, of, of Libya. That's not to say, but I just tell you that the, the kind of military orientation that you're looking at, you should not be surprised with that kind of thing. And there's nothing wrong with a junta leader who is on, uh, on unwelcome, the most part of the thing, and ECOWAS and other people don't reject him. So he has to think militarily and you get for get that kind of escort and that escort is not an invasion you know just invade salon may have been done with the understanding of a diplomatic visit but sadly is is an army government coming to Sierra Leone to visit um, a civilian government they have to behave that way so let us understand things properly the proper understanding of things is necessary for make we will discuss both regional politics and international politics as it relates to Sierra Leone and how we, how we affect it but when I remember again, Gaddafi visited Sierra Leone uh, with the same kind of convoy. When I remember the Mutukade and the Soja and the defense and delegation. So it is always, you get for the the understanding of the of the host country. If Salumbi said no, they know they allow Mamadi Bang uh Dumbuya Foka, you know, the one Sudan said. But um 
they came by road. So it's expected they will come with that kind of might. The question, though, what I would love to see, what I would love to see on the part of the Israeli Union press and other people for investigate whether the convoy that came and the ammunition would encounter it and all that convoy all returned as they came. That then, then that for be with question, did they return? All the Sujaman them, all the gun them, everything would then come with, if they go with and back. That is what you have to be concerned about because they don't go with and back. Is it possible that they came with guns and uh, ammunition where they don't got left for Badabi and go back? Was the convoy a transportation of ammunition from Guinea into Sierra Leone? We have to find out that. So now that that's the question. For journalists or people, that should be the question. If they turn back with everything okay, both their personnel and their, um, their uh, military hardware that they came with, if they return with everything, that the nine for be the point of conversation, the point of discussion, the point of interrogation. Because we're going to find out if a government they can buy and use Guinea as a shipment point for bringing ammunition to the country and are gone and they bring from other bureau, will they get election or not? Because in 2000, leading up to 2012, we remember there was a discussion about the transportation of new arms and ammunition to the country, $5 million. I remember we all being whole at the time, Musa Tarawali was, I think, internal affairs minister when that shipment of ammunition was about $5 million or so. This whole argument, the whole debate leading up to the election. We get a convoy of, of trucks there again, army trucks that will come up from Guinea Khan into Freetown at the time. This was towards 2011, 2012, leading up to that election. So I find out that people usually forget things. So I'm just trying to add this into the conversation as thinking points, but it's not an unusual thing. Forget this kind of uh, thing. And we've had it before. The Guinean army don't intervene in a saloon. Um, before the war in the 1970s, there was even a parliamentary resolution passed in 1970, Sheikh Stephen in time when he was prime minister, we allow the Guinean army for rest for intervene in a saloon in defense of the government in the case that the government of saloon feel they cannot be defended or the, the defense uh, uh, system or the defense infrastructure that Salon will provide um, the required uh, protection for the government and the territorial integrity of the country. So we had that in 1970. When I go look at that YouTube, Sheikh Stevens, this in New York, Stockholm. Uh, you get uh, those videos about the uh, 70s and the so-called coups, 1971 and 72, when the Guinean army stepping in as a consequence of that pa parliamentary resolution between Guinea and Sierra Leone to the extent that they want for even include Liberia into the thing. But the Liberian president at the time, according to Sheikh Stevens, said he was thinking about it. Um, history is important. Knowing the past is important. It's relevant to understanding the present and knowing where we are heading. So thank you very much for today, for today's conversation. Thanks to all those who have been here, who've been listening and pay, and, and pay attention. We'll continue this conversation for next week. Uh, when I pay attention, maybe the government will change their plan or the judiciary will change their plan for Canada and New York. If that happens, um, we can also update that. But they already, they already have it in their, on their plans for come use more taxpayers' money for per diem and tickets. If you're not doing that means they don't save we from more expenditure. But that's the case. And uh, they don't already talk, say, in the car with uh, anti corruption, they don't say they don't come New York, they don't investigate, they don't charge the case when they come again. No more money, no more they don't want to spend. So see you next week. And this is the Frontline Show with me, Cherno Alphaba. We are discussing the weaponization. We've been talking about the weaponization of the Anti Corruption Commission during public elections from 2007 to 2018. We've highlighted the case of, I mean, 2022, we've highlighted the case of. 2022 example with the current chance to in trial. In the next conversation, I will step back and continue deep in the conversation in the past. And uh, I hope that you've had um, this will continue. This will, this is the second episode on this subject. I, I think we will have two more episodes on the subject of the ACC and why, in my estimation, it should not be uh, an institution that should be maintained in Sierra Leone moving forward. Thank you very much.